food is of any importance. Are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> Page 139. Yes, we're moving on. Perikathrim. Tolin. Tanya. Was taught in a brisa, Rabbi Yossi ben Elisha Omer. Im ra'it ador shetarot rabot ba'ot alav, if you see a generation upon which many troubles come, se uvdok bedayenu, sorry, bedayanei Israel, go and examine the judges of Israel in that generation, bedayanim, shekol pur anut sheba'a le'olam, for all misfortune that comes to the world. Lo ba'a ela bishil dayanei Israel comes only on account of the judges of Israel. Wow. Acting corruptly. Acting corruptly. Awesome. Shneemar Shimuna Zot Rashei Beit Yaakov Uktinei Beit Israel. He this now are heads of the house of Yaakov and officers of the house of Israel, Hame Ta'avim Mishpat Ve'et Kol Hayashara Ya'akeshu, who detest justice and twist all that is straight, Bonet Zion Bedarim Virushalayim Ba'avla, who build Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. Rosheha Beshochad Yishpot. Yishpotu uh, ve kohaneha bimchir yoru univieha ve chesef yiksomo. Her heads judge for bribes, and her priests issue rulings for a fee, and her prophets divine for money. Ve al Hashem yishane yishaenu ve gomer. Yet they rely on Hashem. And he's added here, saying, Is not the Lord in our midst? No evil shall befall us. Roshahem, sorry, Roshim Hen. Well, that's an interesting little, sorry, I was just thinking that's an interesting little uh, connection, relationship between words, between Roshim, Roshim, heads, Roshahem, and Ra, and Russia. Russia. Um, Rashaim Hen, they are wicked people. Ela Shetalu Bitukonam Bemishamar Bahayahaolam. But they placed their trust in the one who said, Let the world exist. Assuming that God would not punish them. Lefichach. Therefore, Mevi Akadosh Baruchu Alehen Shalosh Puraniyot. God brings upon them three punishments. Keneged Shalosh Averot Shebi Adam, corresponding to the three sins in their hands. Shnema. Lachen Biglalechem Zion Sade Techadesh Yerushalayim. Iin Tiye Vahar Habait Levamot Yaar. As the verse states, therefore, because of you, Sion shall be ploughed as a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps of ruins, and the Temple Mount shall be as the high places of the forest. So what are the three things? The ploughed as a field, heaps of ruins, and the Temple Mount will be assuming there. Abandoned, effectively. Abandoned. Like a hilltop. Yeah. I can see why you're in such a down mood, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> you read this before coming, didn't you? Yes, I did. No wonder. The Ein HaKadosh Baruch Mashre Shechinato Al Israel, and the Holy One blessed his He will not rest his divine presence on Israel. Until corrupt judges and officers cease from Israel. Wow. 
Why do I know those words? I will turn my hand against you, I will clean away your dross as with soap, and I will remove all your tin. Is that what you've got? No, uh, what I've got, I will purge away your dross as with lye, uh, and I will remove all your alloy. Mm. But Ashiva Shoptaich Kavrishona Vyotsaich and I will restore your judges as in the first place and your advisors as in the beginning. And he has added, afterward you shall be called the city of righteousness, a faithful city. Hooray! <laughs> um, so that's from Ishayahu. Yep. Oh, Yassi Salaych Oh, that's from... The words, there seems to be a... Even though the words are not the same, there seems to be a a rhyme. Similar rhyme. Uh, yeah. Well, the people have wrote... All we're well acquainted with you know, all these things and yeah. I mean you, you you see the imagery repeated and used again and again in all those you know, liturgical poems. Amar Ula And your shall I nifta elabitaka, Jerusalem will not be redeemed except through charity. Shnema Sion Bemishpa Tifad Ve Shaveha Bitaka. Zion shall be redeemed through justice and her attorneys through charity. Okay, so he's got righteousness here. Shall be redeemed redeem through righteousness. Sion hmm. bamishpat tipadeh. Well, that's a hard one. Because it says mishpat. Zion so will be, be redeemed with justice and those ah. who return to her with righteousness. Ah. Ah. So and it's got his staka. Is your previous sentence... Yes, yes, also translates it as righteousness. As righteousness. And tzedakah is, uh, in its fullness, is righteousness. It's acts of tzedek. Yeah. Rather than, you know, giving money. Okay. Amara Papa I Batli Yehire Batli Amgushe. If the arrogant disappear, the Amgushe will disappear. What's the Amgushe? The heretics who incite others to idolatry, causing us to be hated. Sorcerers, perhaps. Do you have anything there on that? Uh, if the arrogant will cease to exist, the Persian fire priests will cease to exist as well. If the deceitful judges will cease to exist, the royal officers and taskmasters will seek to cease to exist. Is the way he's translated. This is Ralph Pappas. Yeah. If the corrupt judges disappear, the Gazir Pate will disappear. What did you say? If the corrupt judges, As he says, if the arrogant will cease to exist, the yeah. Persian fire priests will cease to exist Hang on. as well. Okay, so Persian fire priest is the Amgushe, and the next is the judges. Yes, if the deceitful judges will cease to exist, the royal officers, Gazir Pate, Gazir Pate and will taskmasters, be. will cease to exist. What were they again? The Persian fire priests and uh, the Gazir Pate royal um, Persian officers Persian. royal officers and taskmasters there's a little note here royal officers Gazir Pate from the Aramaic Gozir meaning official and the Iranian suffix Pati meaning lord this was the title of a Sasanian functionary the Sasanian Sasanians were the people who ran the uh, empire at this time. 
the two Persian empires mm -hmm. after Alexander yeah. with the Parthians who fought the uh, Romans to a standstill and then they were followed by the Sassanians. Can you, can you go back a step? Say that again please, just because I'm trying to okay. file it. <laughs> okay. The Parthians yeah. headed a, the Persian Empire for right. that period. Okay. And they fought the Roman Empire uh -huh. to a standstill. Uh -huh. And they were somewhat favourable to their Jewish population. So the Parthians were Persians? Mm. I did not know that. And then they were succeeded by the Sasanians, who were also Persian. Mm. Although they all originated in the area of Afghanistan, around that area. Okay. And the Sasanians um, really promoted the state religion of the fire priests, and they were not friendly to us. And there were times when they um, suppressed us or forbade us to um, practice our religion in a public so fashion. So, this is around uh, zero? Um, the Parthians is, my guess, and I only guess at this point up to about the year 200, and the Sasanians mm. would have been from about 200 to the Muslim invasion, which would have been around 700. Uh -huh. Okay. So most of this, what's going here, uh, most of it would have been Sasanian times. Mm -hmm. So, right. But a lot of Greek words are there because that area was dominated by Alexander's for uh, a while before the Persians established themselves. Uh -huh. So, Ibatle Yehire Batle Amgushe, if the arrogance disappear, the Amgushe, the fire eaters, was it, did you say? Yeah, he's got a Persian fire priest. Persian fire priests will disappear, sorry. As it's written, I will clean away your dross as with lye, and I'll remove all your alloy. Um, so is there a... Expansion. No, I'm, I'm just looking. They correlate those two sentences, right? Mm. So the sigayich mm. seems to match up with the amgushe, maybe. Could be, because he's expanded it. Yeah. And I will remove all your ally, Bede Laich. This teaches that when the conceited and haughty Sigim are purged, the priests of fire who are separated, Muvdalim, from the fear of God will also cease. So is there Muvdalim in there? No. No, it's not. Mufdalim, that's like the word um, lahavdil or like um, havdala, mm. separation. Yeah. Okay, that's curious. There's nothing additional here. In Hebrew, so this is in respect of the Sigayich and the Amgushe, I think. Mm -hmm. It says in Hebrew, the phonetically identical letters Shin and Sin are interchangeable. So that the word Sigayich is read Sigayich with a Sin from the root Sagi, meaning big. Thus, Sigayich, your dross, is interpreted, is interpreted as referring to arrogant people who make themselves great. And he's got haughty, yeah. That's what Sigim means. Ah, uh, and Bedil, tin, or alloy, is similar to Muvdal, separate, and alludes to the Amgushe, who separate Jews from their God by inciting them to idolatry with their lies and deception. 
which in that social circumstance would have been the Persian or priest with the fireplace. Exactly. Precisely. Precisely. That's what Rashi says. He says, the verse therefore means, when I clean away your arrogant ones, I will remove all the separatists. Very good. Okay. So, Ibatle Dayeni, Batle Gizir Pate, Yichtiv, as it's written, Hetir Hashem, Mishpatai, Pina Ovecha. Ovech. God has removed your judgment. He has turned away your enemy. <clears throat> okay, we'll go on. Amar Rabbi Malai, do you want to know about that or? No. Okay, Amar Rabbi Malai, Mishum Rabbi Elazar, the Rabbi Shimon. My dichtiv shavar Hashem mate reshaim shevet moshlim. What is meant by that which is written, Hashem has broken off the staff of the wicked, the rod of the rulers. Where is it written? The rod of the rulers. Shavar Hashem mate reshaim. Hashem has broken the staff of the wicked. Elu Hadayanin Shina Asumakel, these are the judges who became a who become a stick in the hands of their officers. Okay. Um, and he's expanded by saying the attendants abuse people and the judges provide the attendants with legal backing or moral support. Wonderful. Shevet Moshlim, the rod of the rulers, Elu Talmide Chachamim. These are the Torah scholars in the families of the judges. And he's expanded that by saying these Torah scholars assist their relatives, the judges, and conceal their faults. Huh. That's pretty bad, isn't it? Marzutra um, Amar. Elo Talmide Chachim Shemelam Dim Hilchot Sibor Ledaine Bor. These are the judges, Torah scholars, sorry, who teach general laws to unlearned judges. And he's expanded that they teach ignorant judges just enough Torah and modes of conduct to prevent the people from realizing how ignorant they are, enabling them to maintain their positions. But of course, they're, they're members of a family. Killing me, man. You know, it touches me very deeply because I'm. This is what I'm learning. And when you maybe, I don't know. I don't want to get out there one day and see people doing the wrong thing. But you can do that any day. The trick is, and I must say, I haven't always succeeded. So far from it. The trick is to try and separate the people from what they're supposed to represent. You mean don't be subjective? It means uh, realise that although these people are doing the wrong thing, Mm. it doesn't mean the thing that they're supposed to be doing, Mm. in its proper application of the Torah, is uh, bad in itself. Ah, see. A rotten judge doesn't mean a rotten law. Please note, this is not a drill. This is not a drill. Due to a gas thing, a gas leak, we are Amar Rabbi Elazar ben Malai, Shum Reish Lakish. Thank you. My dictive, he pesem negoalu badam et potesem be avon. What does it mean? Your hands are sullied with blood. 
and your fingers with sin. Your lips have spoken lies and your tongue mutters wickedness. So what does all that mean? Oh, that's what it means. No. Yeah, it what does all that mean? Ki kapechem negalu badam elu hadainin. If your hands are sullied with blood, these are the corrupt judges. The esbotechem the avon elu sofre hadainan. Dainin, and your fingers with sin, these are the court scribes. You write falsehood with their fingers. Wow. Uh, okay, so, Siv Tatechem di Brusheke Elu Orche Hadainin. Your lips have spoken lies. These are the lawyers. Well, what did they do wrong? Legal advice. I'll get there to put ah. no about Le Le Shonchem Avla Tehege Elu Bale Dinin. And your tongue matters wickedness. These are the litigants. Okay. Uh, legal advice. In ancient times, there were no attorneys to prosecute or defend the litigants in rabbinical courts. Rather, each party stated his own case. The legal advisors referred to here were people who acted improperly by teaching litigants to present advantageous claims. This compromised the legal system because the parties were supposed to present the facts. The interpretation of these facts and the halakhic conclusions was to be left to the judges. Consequently, these legal advisors were viewed unfavorably. Wow. <laughs> Um, in some courts or quasi courts, mm. you still have to uh, say, like a guardianship court in New South Wales, you still have to get permission from the uh, tribunal to have, to have a lawyer arguing the case. Ideally, what they want to hear is from the families uh, and the patients. Okay. The Ma Rabbi Malai Mishum Rabbi Yitzchak Migdala Miyom Sheperesh Yosef Mechav Lo Ta'am Ta'am Yain. So the day that Yosef was separated from his brothers, he did not drink wine. Yetiv Olek Had Kod Nezir Echav. As it's written, and upon the head of the exile, Nazir, from his brothers. Ah, a Nazirite doesn't drink wine. Well, the, and on the crown of the head is he who is separated, and that's Nazir, from his brothers. And they take that as being separated, as being uh, indicative that he was a Nazirite. Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Sanina Amar, they too did not drink wine from that day. And they drank and became intoxicated with him. And they drank and became intoxicated with him. That's been when they sat down with Joseph ah. and ate together. Miklau, sorry. Miklau, the ad haidna lo. This means, implies, that until that time they did not drink wine. Until now there was no drunkenness. It's the implication. And they abstained from drinking. Curious. I said to you, I've never seen this before. Rashi, Rashi says, uh, and this is actually the Rashi from Bereshit, 
he says that it was through their desire for eating and drinking that they came to sell Yosef in the first place. Those who recall, they didn't really sell Yosef. No, not according yes. to the shut words. No, he was drawn out of the, yeah. you know, by passers by. Yeah. But it was through eating and drinking, their eating and drinking, that he was saved because they cast him into the pit and then went off to eat and drink, leaving him there, and because they weren't there, he was drawn out. The Ida and the other Amora, Rab Malai, Shichrut Hu De Lo Hava. There was no intoxication, Shtiya Mi Hava, but there was drinking of wine. How do you do that? Well, you, you drink without getting drunk. Oh, okay. Vama Rabi Malai. Visavaracha Vesama Belibo. In the merit of, uh, and he will see you and he will rejoice in his heart. This is uh, God's testimony about Aharon. Zaha le Koshen Hamishpat Alibo. Aaron merited his Koshen Mishpat upon his heart. I'll read you the whole here because yeah. it gives it more sense. Please. And Rabbi Malaya said, it is stated in the verse, and the anger of the Lord is kindled against Moses, and he said, Is there not air in your breath of the Levite? I know that he can surely speak, and also behold, he is coming out to greet you, and he will see you and be glad in his heart. Rabbi Malai thought that as a reward for Aaron's lack of jealousy at seeing his brother Moses rise to greatness, as it is stated, and he will see you and be glad in his heart, he merited to become the high priest and for the blessed place of judgment to rest on his heart. I think the expansion is necessary. Yeah, for sure. It's much better. Shalkule bene Bashkar Lelevi. People of Bashkar sent uh, three queries to Levi. Do we know about them? What well, goes on about? Is, is there a note about the Bashkar? Uh, not really, but there's okay. extensions in between that give you an idea of okay. what's going on. Killer Mahu. What's the law about a canopy on Shabbat? Shuta Baharma Mahu. Thank you. What's the law concerning hops in a vineyard? Yeah. So what's the uh, meaning can you mix hops and vin and, and vines is it kilaim in a vineyard? Yeah. Met the Yom Tov Mahu, what's the law about um, a corpse on Yom Tov? And it says he's digging a grave for a corpse on Yom Tov. Adazil Nach Nashed Levi, by the time the messenger arrived, Levi passed away. Amashmuel Rav Menashia, I Chakimat Shlach if you're wise. and know that to send to them. If you are wise and able to respond, send them answers to okay. their questions. Okay. So he's speaking to Rav Manashia, saying, yeah. send them an answer. So, Shalach Leho, Rav Manashia sent to them. Kila, about a canopy. Chazarnu uh, al kol tidei chila. I've reviewed all the considerations of a canopy. Velo matinula tad heiter, and I've not found grounds to permit construction of a canopy on Shabbos. But let him send to them um, the the teaching of Rami Bar Yechezkel, where it was tied with a cord and rope. So why didn't he send them that? Because Bashkarians are not Torah scholars. They would not distinguish between permitted and prohibited methods of spreading the canopy. Right. 
פשוטה בחרמה עיר בובה, פוסט אינה ויניאר, קונסטיטיוט כלאיים, ולשלח להו כדרבי טרפון. He should send to them what Rabbi Tarfan said, which was the Tanya, this is Tana Braitha, Kishot, Hot, Rabbi Tarfan Omer, and Kilaim Bekerim, that do not constitute Kilaim when planted in a vineyard, that's the Hot, Bechachamim Omrim Kilaim Bekerim, and they say, just say they are Kilaim in a vineyard. Bekaimalan, Kol Hameg, as we have established, כל המקל בארץ הלכה כמותו בחוץ לארץ. We would take a lenient position within Eretz Israel, the halakha follows him outside of Israel. לפי שאינם בני תורה, because Bashkarians are not Torah scholars. Okay, that's why he didn't send them that view. Mark, I wonder who these people were. There's nothing directly about them, but there's a general thing. Because they were not well versed in Torah. The explanation appears in several places in the Talmud. Essentially, it means that anywhere in which there are no people learned in the Torah, the ruling is stringent with regard to practices that require nuance understanding of the halakha and the ability to distinguish between permitted practices and similar prohibited ones. Still, the sages were lenient with regard to those practices in places in which Torah scholars lived, based on the assumption that they would know how to maintain the appropriate halakha distinction. I, I feel yeah. it certainly would have been possible to and a slightly longer message to set out clearly the distinctions with regard to its benefits of the field. Or, you know, saying, well, hops can be done in this fashion, or whatever. But this is another case of the rabbis erring on the side of caution. I can't say, especially within our community, without naming the particular group, they tend to always go on the side of caution instead of extending the leniency. Well, I, I, mean, I know that when we were in Sydney, we learned certain things about how you fix up your kitchen to place on And when we got to Israel, the rabbis they told us, no problem at all. I don't know if that makes us more machmir or more stupid. The more machmir, the more stupid. We're more machmir because we're more stupid. <laughs> wow. And the of course, there's that little glow inside when you know that you're just a bit tougher than your neighbour and therefore more holy. Oh. Okay. 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 Machris Rav, Rav announced, Hai man devaye le Mizra kshuta bechar me Lizra. Whoever wishes to plant hops in a vineyard may plant them. Rav Amram Chassida man gid ilave. Rav Amram Chassida would penalize with lashes for doing so. Rav Meshashia yahiv le prutza litinok nochri bezarale. Rav Meshashia would give a prutza coin to a non-Jewish child and child would plant the hops for him. <laughs> Go on. Velitain le Litinok Israel, but let him give the Prutah to a Jewish child to plant for him. Ate, also not obligated in Mitzvah. Of course. I'd say le Mitzvah, the child might come to continue this derech as an adult. Velitain le le Gadol, not for him. Why not just give it to a non Jewish adult? Ate le Icha Lufe be Israel. There was concern that people might confuse him with a Jew and get the wrong idea. Met. Okay, so now onto the issue of a Met. Regarding burial on Yom Tov. Shalach Lecho, he sent to them. Met lo yitasku be lo ye hudain velo armain. 
a calf, neither a Jew nor a non-Jew should be involved in the burial. What? Lobby on Tov Rishon Lobby on Sheni. Okay, so no one can be involved on Yom Tov Echad or Sheni. Any? Is this so? Vama Rabbi Yosa, Bashila Tama Rabbi Asi. Uza Hava Bevei Knishta de Maon Be Yom Tov Hasamuch Le Shabbat. There was an occurrence in the synagogue of Maon on a Yom Tov that was uh, adjoining a Shabbat. Uh, a person died, he said it. Right, a person died. This is a, a contrast to the last uh, town that we heard of. Yes. We've got a note here. The synagogue of the settlement of Ma'on. This is referring to the synagogue of the town of Beit Ma'on, which was situated very close to Tiberius. Consequently, the kids of the synagogue were able to approach Rabbi Yochanan, who lived in Tiberius, and ask him about the Halakha of Beirut. Aha. Veloya dana i milfaneha i malakareha, but I don't know whether uh, it was before Shabbat, the Yom Tov was before Shabbat or after Shabbat on the Sunday. But atul lakame to Rabbi Yochanan, and they came before Rabbi Yochanan, but Malechun, he says to them, uh, he, he answered them, Yitasku be amamin. Let the non Jews involve themselves with it. I'm just going to go to the bathroom. Okay, so Vama Rava, Rava said, Mess, a corpse yes. waiting burial. Beyond Tarisha, Nitasku Boamamin. Uh, so I said, on the first day of Yom Tov, the, I suppose, the, the assume it means the non-Jews should involve themselves with it. Mm-hmm. But Yom Tov Sheni, Yitzhakov Bo Israel. The second day of Yom Tov, Jews should involve themselves with it. Vafilo be Yom Tov Sheni, Shorosh Hashanah. And even on the second day, Rosh Hashanah. And even on the second day, Rosh Hashanah. Mash ein ken bebeta, which is not the case regarding an egg. Uh, here we go with regard to an egg laid on the festival. The two days of Rosh Hashanah are considered one long day that cannot be disconnected. Therefore, in contrast to other two-day festivals in the diaspora, use of an egg laid on the first day of Rosh Hashanah is prohibited on the second day. However, in deference to the dead, the sages were lenient with regard to burial on the second day of Rosh Hashanah. Why then did Rav Benasha prohibit the inhabitants of Bashkar from attending to the burial on a festival? Yeah. The Gemara answers. Ah, Lefish Enam B'nai Torah, because Bashkarians are not Torah scholars, and they would adopt green, groundless leniencies if they are informed of a legitimate leniency. Mm. Okay. Amar Rav Avin Bar Rav Huna, Amar Rav Chama Bar Guria. Mitatef Adam Bechila over Chaseha. A person may wrap himself in a canopy and its, and its strings. The canopy consists of a white cloth with strings sewn onto the sides, which are used to tie the canopy to the bedpost. The Yoteli Rishut Harabim Beshabbat, the Enoch Hoshesh, and go out into the public domain on Shabbat without concern. Maishna mid Ravuna. What's the difference between this and that of Ravuna? Sama Ravuna, Ma Rav. Ravuna said the name Rav. Hayatseba Talisha Ena Mitsu Yetse Ke Hil Khataba Shabbat. One who goes out in a public area on the Shabbat wearing a cloak which is not equipped with tzitzit in the <laughs> in the halachic halachic correct way. Chayav chatat. They are liable to a chatat. That's very funny. So it's a four-cornered garment, basically. Yeah. Because the remaining fringes are not an integral part of the garment. Since they do not fulfill the mitzvah, they are considered a burden <laughs> that may not be carried into the public domain on Shabbat. The Gemara answers there is distinction between the two cases. Now you can go on. Tzitzit legabe talit chashivei velobat. 
roughly. Cysted in relation to the cloak are significant and are not subordinate to the cloak. They're distinct. Hane lo chashive uvatli. And these strings are insignificant and are subordinate to the cloak. Yeah. And I'll negate it, it says there. Mm. Uvatli. Oh, negate no, it. I'm sure it's much better. Ama Rabba Bar Rav Huna Ma'arim Adam Al Meshameret Vyom Tov Litzlot Bar Rimonim A person may employ such a fuse with regard to a strainer on Yom Tov to hold pomegranates Betole Bar Shmarim and holding uh, holding the drinks in it to get the wine out, to get the juice out. Ama Ravashi, Vehu Talabarimonim, but this can only be done if he holds the pomegranates in at first to show that he was actually, this is what he's using it for. Maishna Mehadatanya, how does this differ from what we learned in the Baraisa? Metilin Shechar Bemoed, Lasurech Hamoed, we may brew beer on uh, the, the Moed of the festival, yeah, on the Moed of the festival. If it is needed for the festival, shelo letzorech hamoed asur. If it's not needed for the festival, it's forbidden. Echad shechar marim veechad shechar seorim. This is true about both date beer and barley beer. Af al pi sheyesh lahen yashan. Even though they have older beer. And even, even though they have older beer in stock, right? Ma'arim veshateh min hechadash. They may employ subterfuge by drinking from the new stock. Mm. So basically, saying is that allowed? I think. Hatam lo muchacha. Milta, there it's not apparent. Uh, you know when people see someone starting to brew beer, they have no way of knowing whether or not he has beer at home. The consequence is whether or not the action itself is prohibited in that case. However, here, right. regards to a strainer. <laughs> However, here, it is apparent and uh, people see him suspending a strain of the wine, which is so difficult. So that's why he has to suspend show it the and show the pomegranates to him before he can put the wine in. Okay. Alright. Okay. Um, Arm yeah. Just before we go, yeah. I remember seeing a side note. Ah, uh, yes. Artifice is permitted in cases that are not fundamentally prohibited, but involve activity that is prohibited either by rabbinic decree or due to concern that one might come to transgress a Torah prohibition. Consequently, when a Torah scholar who is aware of the severity of the Torah prohibition and the parameters of rabbinic decree acts in a manner that is not clearly perceived as a transgression, artifice is permitted. Uh-huh. There's a note here. Uh, there I saw. Now it is. This is on the Halakha page. Hang on, is that the right? No, no, we're not. No, we're not there yet. But the right at the end it says. Uh, nowadays, employing artificial prohibition because Torah scholars are not considered to be of high enough caliber. Amrulay Rabbanan le Ravashi, Chazi Mar Hai Turva, Rabbanan le Ravona ben Rabbi Chayun Shemei. See Master, the young Torah scholar, and Ravona ben Chayun is his name. But oh, that's uh, a bit of um, <laughs> bit of uh, what's it called, Lashon Hara. Avamre la Ravuna ba Rabbi Chalvan Shemei. And so Ravuna, the son of Rav Chalvan, is his name. 
Deshakal Barajatuma Umanach Bavarza Dadana. He took a clove of garlic and placed it in a spigot of a barrel. Ba'amar Laatsnuye Kamikavena and said, I intended to put it away, not to plug the spigot. Well, he said, I intend to store it. And he's out of here. He thereby stopped the spout on Shabbat. And then it goes on, and similarly he went to the Azil Venaim Vimabra, the Avar Laha, Gisa Vesayev Tere, and the scholar went to sleep in a ferry boat on Shabbat, crossed to the other side and watched over his produce there. The Amar Ana Lamenam Mikavena. And he said, I intended to sleep, not to cross the river. Not allowed to cross the river on Shabbos? Yeah. Is that right? Yep. So he went on board, said he was going to sleep, left the stadium and took him across. He got off, went and inspected his crops, went back to the ferry, had another sleep, and went back in the other direction. I wonder if they used a ramp. Hmm? I wonder if they used a ramp. Because we covered that in earlier, didn't we? Anyway, um, so this is obviously employing artifice yes, and way, probably not doing a very good job of it. Which is a Amar lehu, Ravashi said to them, Ha'arama ka'amar, kamrat, are you saying, uh, are you saying this is subterfuge? Are you speaking of artifice? Are you speaking about subterfuge? Ha'arama bidrabanan here. These subterfuges were to circumvent rabbinic prohibition, but Sorva, Rabbanan law, Loate Lame Vad Lechachila, and a young Torah scholar would not come to transgress the prohibition in the first place. In So he can do it. Well, yeah, because. In his case, he knows the necessaries and wouldn't come to an actual transgression. Uh, but I think it's sailing pretty close to the wind. What did you do? What did you do? Not in Mayim Al Gav Hashmarim, Vishwil She Yitzalu. We may pour water over wine dregs so the dregs become cleared. Let's get the extra wine out. O mesaninin et hayain besudarin o vispa mitrit. And we can fill the wine through cloth or through a basket made of palm twigs. Benis not nimbeta. And we can put an egg into a mustard strainer. Here is a Roman strainer of the Talmudic period. Ah, I see. The Osin Inumlin the Shabbat, and we may make Inumlin on Shabbat, which is wine and honey. Wine and honey. Rabbi Ramir, the Shabbat. Bechof and the Shabbos in a cup, the Yom Tov Belagin, uh, on Yom Tov in a bottle, or the Moed Bechavit, on, a, on the Moed in a, can be done in a barrel. Rabbi Sadok Omer, Hakol Lefi Haorchin. Everything depends on the number of guests. It doesn't matter what day it is. Well, I think what he's saying is, it doesn't matter what quantity. It doesn't really matter what country you make. Okay, on Shabbat, have I heard of saying that one may only make animal in a small cup on a festival yeah. in a larger vessel, and on the immediate days of the festival, one may do it in a barrel. And then my son says, it doesn't matter. It depends on the number of guests. Yeah. But here, in relation to the filtering of the water and wine, yeah. 
since these liquids are drinkable even without filtering, doing so does not violate the prohibition of the liquid. And that's clarified as you, when we get into the Gemara. These liquids are drinkable even without filtering. Oh, you'll find that he's talk, they're talking about clear wine. Okay, so Gemara. Amar Zairi, Notena dam yain salol o main salolin la toch ha meshameret beshabat ha eno koshesh. A person may place clear wine and clear water through a wine strain on Shabbat and not be concerned for desecration. Aval, achurin lo, but murky liquids you can't put through a strainer. Aha. Uh-huh. Meitive, they challenge this. Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel Omer, Toreh Adam Savit Shal Yain Yena O Shmareha, a person may stir a barrel of wine, it's uh, mixing with wine and the dregs, it leaves the dregs, Yes. Yeah. And place it into a wine strainer on Shabbat and not be place it into a wine strainer on Shabbat and not be concerned. He's out of the parent who is permitted to place even murky wine in a strainer. Targamaz Iri Bain Hagitot Shanu was taught concerning wine drunk between the wine presses. When the wine has yet to ferment and will remain murky even uh, after filtering. So I forget what this is called, but they squeeze the grapes, the juice comes off, and they leave the juice and the skin, if they want the red wine, in the vat till fermentation starts. And then they filter it and use the juice, you know, to really get the whole thing to go. So, we seem to be talking at this point about the really grape juice with skins in it. Grape juice with skins? Skins and seeds and stuff. Misananin etayayin besudarin We can fill the wine through cloth. Ama ravshimi barchia uvilvad shelo yaase guma Provided that one does not make a hollow in the cloth. And hollow is better than this translation. But you he say says hole, and it's not a hole, it's a hollow. Logically, it can only be a hollow, not a hole. I mean, if you're going to filter something, you're not going to stick a hole through the cloth. You must be talking about a hollow, but the hole the juice is that are filled in. So when spreading the cloth over the mouth of the container, one may not form a hollow in the cloth. Mm. A hollow is made to direct the flow of the wine into the centre of the container, rather than have it drip from all points of the cloth. Uh Aha. This is forbidden because of uvda de chol. It appears as though it's performing straining a form of sorting. And also there's a concern one might come to wring the wine from the cloth. But that's always a concern. Rather, one must place the cloth flat over the mouth of the container, which does not appear to be straining. I must say, if I, I was looking at that on a practical basis, I would design a pot that had straight edges, by the came in, it got straight down, I had a, a lip inside at the bottom, high around it. And you just put your 
uh, wad of cloth over that, supported by the lid, and pour into the container above that so it stops the bottom. Water. The liquid is drained through, but the gas would not go right down in. Anyway, that's something else. Okay. Basket made of palm tree. I'm a little bit Egyptian basket. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, Mitri. I'm a Rahia Barashi, I'm a Rav. Ovilvacelo Yagbiha Nikar Kaito shall plead Tefa, provided that the basket does not rise uh, a Tefa above the floor of the container. Got here, so divided one does not lift the basket, but the pepper the bottom of the lower. That's like um, you know what that's like. That's like the um, the saucer under the under yeah, the. Exactly. That's exactly the exactly. same thing. Amarav, high prun uh high paronka, that rag. Used to cover the barrel. A palge de chuva shere is permitted on half the barrel's opening. A kule chuva asur is forbidden on the barrel's entire opening. It's forbidden on the barrel's entire opening. Oh, that's strange. Completely covering the mouth of an upright barrel creates an ohel, a, tent, a cover. Yeah. Tent. Thus, one may cover a barrel only halfway, according to Rashi. Of course, this is the problem only if there is a space of a tefach between the covering and the liquid in the barrel, as explained in the previous note. Okay, whatever. Amara um, Papa, lo nihadak inish. Tinyata de Pume de Hosne de Chavita. A person should not pack straw and wood chips. Pack straw and wood chips in the mouth of a barrel jug. Mishum de Mechaze Kimishma Kim Sham Kim Because it appears as if it's a wine strainer. Deve Rav Papa Shafu Shikra Mimana Lamana. In the house of Rav Papa, they would pour beer slowly from vessel to vessel. Oh, to leave the dregs behind. Amale Rav Acha Midifti Laravina. Haika Nitsotsot. But there are drippings which pour out at the end from amid the dregs. Why isn't that sorting here? But, but there are the final drops, uh, which remain when one pours the beer into another that vessel. That sounds a lot better. Yeah. Nitsosot leve rapapa lo chashivi. Droopings in the household of rapapa are insignificant. Because beer was always readily available in the house. But they had plenty, so they didn't bother pouring out the last drops that were there. So you didn't have an act of separation taking place. There was always some liquid at the bottom that included the drinks. Yeah, included the, you know, what do you call it? The leftover bits and pieces. Oh, so they, oh. so they didn't go right down to the last no. insula. No, they, they left enough liquid there to contain. The not in beta in Sanenet, and we may put an egg into a master strainer. Tane Yaakov Kaka, Lefish Enosin Ota Ela Legavin. Because we do not perform this 
separating of an egg except for colouring purposes. <laughs> That's one who separates an egg while colouring mustard. Has not performed the melacha, melacha of slaughter. Uh, he's added, it is only made to enhance the colour of the food. That does not negate the egg white as significant food in the sense that it would be considered waste and therefore no actual selection. I was thinking about this. Is there any halakhas in there that you want to say? Or? Mm, not really. I think there was one from earlier that I was going to mention. Yeah. Pops in a vineyard. Outside Eretz Yisrael, it is permitted to sow hops in a vineyard as per the custom of the three elders. It is prohibited to sow wheat, barley, and grapeseed or two species ah. of vegetable and grapeseed together on the same plot of land. The halacha is not in accordance with the stringent tradition of the Ah, that's interesting. Because it's not one of the... Is it the Shiva Minim? Yeah, that would be it. That sounds like what it would be. It's not what it would be. Yeah. Um, the giving a perusa to a Gentile child. Outside of Eretz Yisrael, the laws of diverse kinds only apply by rabbinic law, indeed one. They even have a Gentile child, so prohibited mixtures of diverse kinds, e.g. wheat, barley, and grapeseed on his behalf. Which is interesting. Very interesting. And it gives the uh, it gives the Palestinians something to do. 